What's up everybody? Welcome to our channel. On today's video, we're going to be comparing Tampa and Orlando to see which one is better. Who's got the best beaches? Which city has the best vibes and food? Which one of these cities has the least traffic? Which one of these cities has the best opportunities, things to do? Which city has the best downtown district? You know, Tampa's got a big downtown and so does Orlando. Which city has the best jobs and economy? If you move to these cities, what will you do better? What about suburbs? People don't want to live in the city. They might want to live in the suburbs. Which city has the best suburbs and infrastructure to get you from one place to the other is very important. So we're going to look at Tampa and Orlando side by side when it comes to traffic. Orlando has much better infrastructure however it also has millions of people who go there every year so tampa on the left is the clear winner when it comes to traffic despite the fact that it doesn't have really good infrastructure there's less people in tampa therefore the traffic situation there is a little bit better but to be honest both of these cities really suck when it comes to traffic in orlando you do not want to get stuck on interstate 4 it is a nightmare at peak hours even like late on a sunday night you can get stuck in a traffic jam in orlando on i4 and in tampa heading south into bradenton and sarasota in the afternoon is really bad and heading north in the spring hill is a nightmare on 75 so both cities have crappy traffic when you talk about the economy Orlando is the clear winner. The metropolitan area has seen some of the most tremendous growth of anywhere in the country and the city of Tampa being an older city has not been able to grow as fast and the areas that are expanding in Tampa are all separate and there's no infrastructure between them. Orlando has been a planned growth something that a lot of other cities in florida don't have in orlando they're putting in the infrastructure first and then later on they're bringing in the people so orlando is untouched when it comes to their growth development and economy and the future prospects for orlando are very good now many years back tampa had higher incomes in the future orlando is going to overtake it it already has and it will continue to have higher incomes as the tampa area has become economically stagnant and orlando continues to grow one of the reasons that orlando is growing is because of its infrastructure its geographical location in the center of the state means that it's been able to grow and expand in all directions while all the other cities in florida or along the coast there's nowhere to grow Orlando, on the other hand, being in the central part of the state, has been able to grow and expand and plan and make roadways and toll roads. I'm not going to tell you it's cheap to go around Orlando because there's a lot of toll roads you have to pay for. Cost aside, you need these things for an area to grow. And Orlando has been able to do that because of its geographical location. And it's going to continue to grow. Investments are coming in. Roads are being built. Large companies are building incredible investments. Nearby Lakeland, Florida, which is halfway between Orlando and Tampa, but Lakeland had the only job growth of anywhere in the United States during the pandemic. All that is good stuff. Orlando is definitely looking good in the future. Now, let's talk a little bit about the city of Orlando itself. The city of Orlando is a tourist hub. It is actually the largest tourist destination in the entire world and they can expect about 70 million people a year to visit and despite most of that being related to tourism there's still a resilient economy there's still construction and growth going on there's a lot of things to do if you live in orlando and the fact that there's so many things to do means you're going to be spending a lot of money so if you move to orlando be prepared to spend more money than you could ever imagine. The parks are expensive. The attractions are expensive. The food is expensive compared to other places in the state. Everything you do here is going to be expensive. But it's a fun city with a lot of great suburbs. And we'll talk about the suburbs later on in the video. The city does have neighborhoods that are bad. But they're kind of easy to avoid. You don't have to be stuck in those neighborhoods. One of the best things Orlando has going for is a downtown and when you compare the downtowns of the city, despite Tampa being more charming, despite Tampa having more of a beachy feel and 
kind of more relaxed, charming feel to it. On the left is Orlando, and it is the clear winner because the downtown in Orlando has had a lot of investment. It's had a lot of growth. When you look at the skyline of Tampa, not too much has gone in. It's just an incredible thing that Miami's downtown is tremendous. Orlando has had all these investments in all directions. And downtown Tampa remains exactly the same like five buildings as they were many years ago. I don't understand why Tampa hasn't had this investment. And I really feel it's because Tampa is kind of constricted by the geography of the water in older neighborhoods in all directions. It seems like there's nowhere to grow in Tampa. And this has constricted Tampa and St. Petersburg to remaining exactly the same. Orlando has a vibrant, fun downtown with so many things to do. It's incredible. Now, when it comes to hood vibe, and charm and all those types of things you want from an all-american city tampa is the clear winner orlando has lost its identity and it doesn't have anything iconic a trademark for the city whereas in tampa there's so many trademarks from the food to the culture to the history to the cigar factories to the water there's so much that when you say tampa automatically so much comes to mind with the word Tampa. It might be the Cuban sandwiches, it might be the waterfront, it may be something along the water. There's something when you say Tampa that comes to mind that is culture, that's all American, that's historical. There's still neighborhoods that have their authentic charm, neighborhoods that haven't changed, little corner stores, little old houses. In Orlando, all that is gone. What's left of the original Orlando, who knows what it is because there's so much growth and development that there's nothing left. But there's one thing that also makes Tampa better. Their food is among the best in the entire South. And I know that sounds like a far stretch, but they have good barbecue, which is like the staple of the South, right? Tampa's in the South. You have an incredible Cuban and Colombian food scene. Also, the Cuban sandwich, despite the word Cuban, is really a Tampa sandwich. It was created by the Italians in Tampa, and they call it the Cuban sandwich because it comes on Cuban bread, but it's really an Italian sandwich. Food in Tampa is incredible, and I've never been disappointed with going to a mom-and-pop place in Tampa. May it be a little hole-in-the-wall Cuban place with good variety and reasonable prices. It's always amazed me how Orlando being just a big city with so much international influence, and it's actually hard to find good international food in Orlando. Many years ago, I would have said that Tampa was better than Orlando, but unfortunately, over the years, Tampa has had a lot of complications, situations within the city that keep going from bad to worse and there's no end in sight. One of the biggest challenges that the Tampa metropolitan area has is that it's surrounded by water and that constricts the ability for infrastructure to grow and for investment to come in. Real estate prices continue to go up but not enough to where they're knocking down the old houses and building new ones. You're paying new house prices for something that's already old. And while there are beautiful neighborhoods in the city of Tampa, crime is always present. With a few exceptions like Davis Island and South Tampa, which are starting to get a little bit nicer and better than the rest of Tampa. So unless you're in one of these exclusive neighborhoods, a regular city neighborhood in Tampa, despite the real estate price, you're going to have to deal with a few problems, one of which is going to be homelessness. Now, both Orlando and Tampa have a serious problem of homelessness, but at least in Orlando, it's concentrated into two districts along Colonial, which is Highway 50, and Orange Blossom turning into 192. These are the areas where you have the most homelessness in the Orlando area. However, with Tampa, it is spread out through the entire city and on every major intersection you have beggars. The homeless situation in Tampa continues to grow out of control. Many years back, the concentration of homeless people along Highway 50 in Orlando was the worst in the state. However, now the city of Tampa has the largest concentration of homelessness and the homeless population over the last few years has been so fastly moving from one place to another that there's no real analytical you used to be able to study homelessness analytically some cities have so many homeless populations but now the homeless population leaves one city moves to the next very quickly and there's no real way to track it but i can tell you that right now tampa has a huge 
homelessness problem, and it doesn't seem to be getting any better. And homelessness usually comes with other bad things as well. As far as bad areas in Tampa, here's another thing that Tampa has going against it. There's bad neighborhoods all over Tampa. There's only a few little areas in Tampa that are not really within bad areas. So if you're moving to Tampa, you're going to be running into bad neighborhoods in all directions. Your daily commute from your suburban life to the city to downtown will take you through some rough inner city neighborhoods. If you're moving to Tampa, you're going to have to deal with the hood inner city elements at some point. You're not going to be able to escape it. It's not as bad as Philadelphia or some of the larger cities in the Northeast, but it is thinly spread through the entire urban area to where you are going to have to deal with that element of society whether you like it or not. And as we saw during the riots, that element has the ability to turn the entire city into a lockdown situation, a riots, closing main roads, and destroying businesses, that's definitely not cool. Now, on the other hand, when you talk about bad neighborhoods in Orlando, there's a few pockets that are bad, and you can avoid them if you want to. It's not like the entire city of Orlando has hoods in all directions. Orlando has really grown a lot, and many of the regular neighborhoods that used to be really bad have actually turned better and better, and what's left of the hood element in Orlando is very little. Let's talk about beaches. That's what Florida's about anyways, right? To be honest, neither Tampa nor Orlando actually have beaches, but if you're in Tampa, you're a little bit closer to beaches like Bradenton, Sarasota, Clearwater, or St. Pete, Fort DeSoto, whatever beach you like. In Tampa, you're a little bit closer to the beach. In Orlando, if you live on the far east side of the city, you can go straight out to the Atlantic as well in less than an hour. So it's really not that much of a difference. Tampa does have some nice beaches though within the vicinity. Clearwater is amazing. Fort DeSoto is awesome. Anna Maria Island is awesome. Both cities are going to require a little bit of a commute if you want to get on the water. And overall, I would say that the Tampa side is better than the Atlantic side, at least where Tampa and Orlando are. Overall, I think Tampa wins the beaches because it's a whole lot closer. But how often are you actually going to go to the beach? Because Orlando has much better suburbs. Hands down, undisputable. Orlando has way better suburbs. I mean like world-class suburbs, the best in the country. From infrastructure, everything's brand new from your house to the grocery store to the roads to the sky, baby. Orlando has the best suburbs in the state. Tampa has Wesley Chapel and like Riverview, which is almost like a Lehigh. You just can't compare it. So if you want to live the suburban life, Tampa, it throws so much urban crap and roads in all directions that it doesn't have that suburban feel. But in Orlando, you can find that from Davenport to Clearmont to Lake Nona in all directions, north, south, east, west, the entire Orlando area, amazing suburbs. It wins. All right, so if I had to pick between Tampa and Orlando, which city is better I would definitely say that in 2022, Orlando is the winner. If you asked me three years ago, I would have said Tampa. But the amount of investment in Orlando lets you know that this area is going to continue to grow and provide the residents with good infrastructure, good economy, a lot of things to do, and a much better standard of living. Despite the fact Orlando lacks the character and the fiber of a real American city like Tampa, and everything kind of feels artificial or fake or supplemented. It lacks that genuine feel of a real city because it's so aimed towards tourism. It does feel a little fake and plastic, but at the end of the day, your day-to-day -day livability, I would rather be in the suburbs of Orlando enjoying new shopping, new stores, and incredible attractions than being in an old neighborhood in Tampa. So yes, despite Orlando being more touristy, Tampa really doesn't offer too much. Unless you run into Clearwater or St. Pete that has a larger downtown that's more walkable, 
you got places like Mount Dora in the suburbs and other little communities within the Orlando area that are not part of the urban core that do have a little bit of charm. So you can actually find a place in Orlando that has the things that Tampa has and vice versa. But overall, I would say definitely if I had to pick between Tampa or Orlando, I would personally end up in Orlando, in Orlando a whole lot more. All right, before we end the video, I'm gonna tell you guys one last little thing about Tampa you probably did not know. Did you know that Tampa was actually a mob city? Just like New York and Chicago, there were actual mobsters right here in Tampa and they actually had their own mob just like the big cities up north. And to this day, the street politics of Tampa are still run the same exact way that the old mafiosos used to. 